All right, on that note, we're, we're really excited to have everybody here. We'll get started. So welcome to Maintaining a Healthy Balance at Home. Thank you for tuning in to the third of our three-part series hosted with TrueSport. If you were with us last week for Redefining Fitness at Home, welcome back. If you weren't able to join us, we do have the recording available on the Disabled Sports USA virtual events page, which I'll speak to in just a minute. While we're waiting for a few more folks to join, we'll go over some housekeeping items. Uh, as an attendee, you are able to submit questions to us. To do so, you'll look to the right of your screen and find that control panel. If that control panel isn't expanded yet, there's a red arrow. Just click that and then you'll see a questions tab. You can submit a question and that'll come straight to us. There will be a question and answer segment with the athletes shortly, and that's when we'll get to your questions. If we aren't able to address anything, we'll follow up with an email. This webinar will also be recorded, so you'll be able to access it later and share it with your community if you're interested. So real quick, just wanted to feature our virtual events page. This is what I had mentioned earlier. Um, on Disabled Sports USA's homepage, there is a listing of the various virtual events going on through our membership network, as well as other adaptive sports organizations. So you can see events that are coming up, as well as recordings that are from past events. And we welcome you to check this out to find different opportunities to become engaged. In addition, DSUSA currently has an Adapt at Home campaign where we're really encouraging everybody to continue to stay active, stay safe, stay connected at home, and to post what they're doing to engage with um, the rest of the adaptive sports community. Really briefly, Audrey and I will introduce ourselves. So I am Kayla Hamaker. I'm a training and education specialist with Disabled Sports USA. Right now, Disabled Sports USA is really working hard to support its community of athletes to stay safe, active, and connected, as we mentioned before. And through partnering with great organizations like True Sport, we hope to take a deeper dive into how to redefine these means to achieving these goals, particularly today through finding a balance with work, personal life, and athletic pursuits. And I'll turn it over to Audrey to introduce herself and give you a little bit of information on True Sport. Hi everyone, my name is Audrey and I am the True Sport Outreach Education Lead. Uh, we are so grateful to Disabled Sports USA for the opportunity to participate in this three-part webinar series. Uh, True Sport itself is an initiative of the US Anti-Doping Agency that aims to create a more positive youth sport experience by empowering young athletes and educating parents and coaches on how to develop life skills and core values for both on and off field um, through sport participation. We believe strongly in the power of the athlete voice and are incredibly fortunate to be able to work with Olympic, Paralympic, and Team USA athletes in a wide range of sports who are inherently true sport champions and have incredible stories to share. So with that said, we want to go ahead and welcome and introduce today's webinar guests. So we have two-time Paralympic wheelchair basketball player, Trey Jennifer, and three-time Olympic javelin thrower, Kara Winger. Welcome and thanks for joining us. Thank you. Thanks, Audrey. So I know I know a ton about you just from working with you, but I think it'd be important to let everybody else involved get to know you a little bit more. And one of the interesting common threads between the two of you is that both of you come from a multi-sport background and have found the sports you currently compete in as young adults. So knowing that, Kara, I'm interested to know, how did you start throwing the javelin? And did playing multiple sports growing up prepare you for what you do today? Good question. I started throwing the javelin in my home state of Washington, which is one of like 20 states in the US that has the javelin at the high school level in track and field. So I didn't try track till eighth grade after playing soccer, basketball, softball, swimming, volleyball, like anything possible to stay active and uh, make friends. Actually, we moved a lot when I was little. So sports was kind of my way to connect with people. And then I, I like to say, you know how if you're looking for something, it's the last place you look like you've lost something and you have to find it in the last place you look. Track and javelin was the last sport I tried and it stuck with me after that. So I definitely think all of those other things, learning how to move my body, 
learning how to be coachable in other situations um, and then have the autonomy through kind of like a mixture of team and individual sports to go into an individual sport eventually uh, was super important. Yeah. Would you recommend Javelin to others? Yeah, um, there's, there are so many things in any throwing event that it's like a big giant puzzle. Like there's always something you can improve on. And if you improve one thing, then something else might kind of fall by the wayside. So you have to go back to that. And there's just like these bricks that you put into your foundation of athleticism, like in the throws. So there's just always, no matter what level you're at, that's some, something you can improve on. Uh, so I think it's just perpetually challenging and really fun to try and master. Awesome. Well, thank you for sharing. Trey, how about you? How did you get started playing basketball? And was there anyone in particular who helped to push you towards playing basketball? Oh, yeah. So I actually started playing uh, wheelchair track and basketball at a young age. It was like my focus was track at the age of four years old. Um, and basketball was kind of like the cross cross training for all of that. Um, and then I, after playing for about eight years, I stopped and I wrestled for two years in high school. And, um, and then all of a sudden I got a call, you know, my senior year of high school said, Hey, Trey, do you want to come up and play wheelchair basketball for Edinburgh university? And I was like, you know, um, to be an athlete, uh, and be a student at the same time, this would be awesome. But I was like, Hey, do you guys get a lot of snow up there? Because it's in Northwestern Pennsylvania. The coach is like, nah, and I was like, all right, perfect. Sign me up. Um, so I got there and I was just like, I was not ready. I was like, the snow was taller than I was. And I was ready to, I was ready to go home. And, uh, he basically looked at me and was like, Hey, listen, um, you got a really good knack at this. Just, you know, try it out. If you don't like it. Um, then, then you can go on. But, uh, it, it was an awesome experience and I'm glad that I stuck with it. Um, because after Edinburgh is when I got my first start with team USA, U23s in 2009. And then onto the senior national team after that. So it's been it's been a long journey, but it's been a fun one as well. So knowing uh, your feelings towards snow, then summer sports were definitely going to be the emphasis. Yes, I'm I'm definitely like anything the indoors where we can control you know the temperature and the <laughs> atmosphere. I'm good to go. I'm good to go on that. So summer sports, <laughs> indoor sports. <laughs> Amazing. Well, look, we are thrilled to have both of you join us today to share your tips on maintaining a healthy balance at home during quarantine and for when we get back to the normal grind. So thank you again for being here. Yeah, thank you both for sharing a little bit more about how you've come to the places you're in now. It's, it's always really exciting to hear. Now to our audience, we'd like to hear from you guys. Um, so in just a moment, a poll will appear on your screens. And we would love to hear what activity do you prioritize the most? So take a minute, go ahead and respond. We'll give about 20 more seconds here. Um, thank you, everybody, for your participation there. Um, so it's super interesting to see there's a pretty even spread between staying fit and active, as well as making time for family and friends, and then a little bit behind that, preparing a healthy diet and then me time. Um, so I think something that reinforces is just that it's really important to find that balance and figure out what your priorities for yourself are, um, and to intentionally bring a balanced structure to your life. And we're excited to hear Trey and Kara speak to that um, in just a moment. So turning it back to our athletes and taking in some of the information we just got from the poll, I think a good starting place to hear from both of you is the concept that finding balance oftentimes means determining priorities. So I'm wondering, how do you determine what priorities to focus on first? Okay, you want to go Whoever first? Whoever wants to go. 
Uh, you could go first, Trey. That's fine. Okay, not a problem. Um, I think for me, it's just finding out what's most important for you. Uh, like you said, prioritizing. For me, it's definitely family. Family is number one for me. Uh, so that's the the lead for all of the things that I do and why I do the things that I do. Uh, the reason that I train as hard as I do because I represent them as much as I represent myself, you know. Um, so I feel like when I do bad, you know, it looks bad upon them. When I when I do good, it's the same thing. Uh, so everything that I do in my life is driven by my number one priority, which is my family. Um, and then you know, sports and uh, is a, is number two, but um, with the understanding that there is some sacrifice, right? Uh, some give and take, what we have to do, you know in order to do the sport that I love to do, the family understands that I need to do sacrifices. But when there is a family emergency, sports come second and the family comes first. Love it. So I totally agree, family is everything. And so my husband was an athlete as well. He retired from uh, throwing actually, he threw mostly discus at the end of his career in 2016. So we've been like not athletes at the same time for four years now, which blows my mind and married for five. So kind of that transition into like, I'm still an athlete and he's not, um, has been really smooth and great. And we still like spend a really good time together. But this time of quarantine is really interesting because he's also a genius at like building stuff. And I do some kind of strange things in training to be a javelin thrower so he built me like a cable system to throw with in the backyard and these like um pirouettes like little parallel bars that i can move around my house and do gymnastics stuff with and he's talking about trying to even like manufacture bumper plates for me like he could do that in the garage um so it's just been a really interesting thing to like we get to spend a lot of time together but now it's even more obvious to me that he's so supportive of what I'm doing that we're like in the same house together and he's building me stuff. So we don't have kids, but we have this dog and it's just, it's been really fun to feel like he's always kind of been still a part of my training, but it's so much more obvious that, that they're kind of, they're married. We are married and those priorities are married because he's helping me train um, and we're spending time together at the same time. So it's been super fun to, recognize that they're two different things, but that they work so well together. And I think that's part of balance too, that like these, these multiple things are happening all at the same time, but they can build on each other and make everything really positive within your household. Sure, so knowing, I think for both of you, it sounds like the impact to those that mean the most to you is sort of where you're gonna stagger your priorities, right? So Trey, like you said, if there's a family emergency, that is your priority because you have to create the most good for those people. Um, so I'm wondering, for some folks, it's really hard to determine um, how to create boundaries that not only protect those that they love, but also protect sort of their version of healthy balance between training and work and school and whatever else might be going on. Um, so what advice do you have for someone who is struggling to create those boundaries? Um, definitely finding time uh, is the number one thing, uh, because I think that that is the one thing that uh, we undervalue in life, uh, because I always say, you know, tomorrow you lose $100, you can turn around and gain it back. But the 10, 20 minutes, hour that you spend doing one thing is not something that you can get back, you know, because once our time is spent, it's, it's, it's over. So making sure that you establish the time that you want to spend on an activity and that the, the effort that you're putting forward in that time is productive, um, but also making sure that, again, right, when we prioritize that we want to spend maximum amount of time. So when I schedule out my day, you know, I have work uh, involved with it, working out for my sport, but then I'll also make time for family, right? So I make sure that in the morning, I spend time with the kids. After work, I spend time with the kids. Uh, and then there's uh, myself and Laura time. And then there's workout time. So like, again, there's priorities and steps that I take, but I make sure that I hit each of those points. And you'll hear me say more time spent with the family. Um, but if that means that my night's going to be longer, which means I have to go to the gym at midnight, or if I have to go to the gym at 11 o'clock to ensure that I'm spending time with my family and I'm getting my work done, then so be it. I was thinking about if people like have certain moments in their day that are really nice, like in a regular day, like before quarantine, if you think about like what the best part of your day is, 
what does that look like and why is that so great? Because I like right at the beginning of being stuck at home was kind of like I, I really enjoy laying in bed reading like with my dog after a long day of like practice and recovery stuff and all this like stuff that I have to do. Um, it's just like this little moment of calm and like rejuvenation. And when you're home all day and you're free to like lay down and when you don't have as much to do as Trey um, and like look at my phone and be with my dog like too much, like it becomes less special, you know what I mean? So like recognizing where those little moments of solace are and why they're important to you and being able to like schedule them into your day can be just like a really simple little reset to what you're doing if you're feeling lost and how to find prioritization in your life. Thanks. I think that's really good advice. Something I think I need to uh, heed a little bit. So I appreciate you sharing that. Um, at this time, we want to go ahead and invite our listeners to ask some questions too. So we're going to try and focus on questions about maintaining a healthy balance at home to begin with. So if you have anything you'd like to ask Trey and Kara, please feel free to type in the question section on the right side. I don't know which is the right side for you on your screen. <laughs> uh, we'll allow about 10 minutes of questions before we continue on. Um, and I know that DSUSA uh, had led up to this webinar by introducing um, the opportunity to ask some questions through Instagram. And we do have a couple there. Um, so I'm going to start there, then I'll move over to the questions coming directly from our listeners. So Kara, the first one is for you. They have asked, what strength tips do you have for throwing further? In other words, what lifts or movements do you do? I am currently doing a lot of kettlebell stuff because it's the only thing that I have at my house. Um, hopefully to be remedied this week. I'm really excited to develop my home gym in this time. But for throwing specifically, uh, end range of motion strength is important so that can actually be really simple to develop at home if you have like a bungee or a rope that you can like hang from a tree or something um so to just get your arm into the end range like where you would throw the javelin from or the discus or the shot put or whatever and then have like little movements to strengthen those tiny muscles like at the end of that range of motion because i think that's something you don't get time to focus on when you're able to throw normally and practice normally so thinking about where you have little tiny weaknesses at the end of range of motion can really help your throw in the long run nice well and i think that goes back to last week's conversation with noah and veronica as well where you know we are in a time where we can really dial into maybe some of the movements or strength components or mobility pieces that we don't typically have time to dedicate to so that's awesome that you're utilizing that. Yeah. Uh, Trey, next one is for you. How are you staying connected with your team during this time? I think that's a good one. That's that's a really good question. Um, uh, a lot of people didn't know that like, I, I came down with like a sickness illness and uh, we weren't sure what it was, so I couldn't get tested. Um, so like I isolated myself just in case, um, but you know, I'm out you know, hooray, I'm out after two weeks. Um, but during that time, we, <laughs> during that time, we were keeping together uh, on, uh, you know, emails uh, and Facebook and things of that nature, any type of social media platforms, uh, we're communicating through those means, which, which during that time that, you know, I was in the room was really uplifting, um, especially when I was like, like, man, this, this, this sickness needs to go. Um, but all in all, having those individuals check up on me all the time, that, that was definitely helpful. But then we also had a Zoom call and uh, we're, we're gonna be doing that uh, bi-weekly now or, or twice a month, depending on you know people's schedules. But it helps us keep connected because this is the longest time that we've gone without actually being together as a team. And uh, like I said, that this is the, before that this is a brotherhood almost and, and a family that we've had with a group of guys that we've had on the team and uh, just staying connected, staying together uh, because I mean, we're all isolated at this point, but that doesn't mean that we can't come together as one still and, uh, and still, you know, shoot for our goal. Nice. Well, and I think too, you know, when I think of sports like yours, the practice component oftentimes is highly dependent on having 
team collaboration and sort of that interaction um, with different peers. So uh, someone has asked, how would you encourage younger athletes and their parents <laughs> in this time at home without the peer interaction um, to continue reaching out for that and, and maybe what sort of practices you guys are using to keep building that team camaraderie and, and you know, teamwork without actually being together to play? I think I think establishing a common goal. I mean, understanding that we have a common goal for like, so I take for instance our team. We understand that we have a common goal, and that common goal is to win a gold medal at the 2021 uh, Tokyo Games. So, what, what we're understanding by understanding that and establishing your goal, you have to have little mini goals underneath of that, right? Whether that's continuing your mental process because that's something that we can do, continue improving our mental aspect of our game, but also physical. Uh, so just because we're in the house, we don't have access to a weight room or anything like that, doesn't mean that uh, you're not able to work out, right? There's different movements, like Kara said, um, even if you have bands, things of that nature, keep yourself mobile and able to continue working out. Um, and then, like I said, staying connected with your teammates, because I think that that's the biggest thing, having a bond with those guys on the floor is definitely helpful when you're competing against the other teams. And just because like we're a year and a half or year out, then doesn't mean that you can't still work on those things. Sure, I think that's good advice. Yeah, definitely. And I love the idea of having a common goal. I think um, oftentimes when folks think about setting goals, they prioritize individual goals and sort of that self-improvement factor. Um, but equally as important, it you know helps to have an understanding of what team goals are. So as you make progress on your individual goals, you're also keeping in the foreground um, sort of the, the team outcome. Yeah, yeah definitely. So uh, switching gears here a little, Kara, I'll start with you because I think you're gonna have a really great answer to this. Um, what do you like to eat pre-workout? Ooh, pre-workout. Mm. In this time of quarantine, I, uh, I'm i lucky enough to get snacks from Honey Singer. They're amazing, a Colorado company, just super quality, delicious food. And it's like mostly, um, you know, carbohydrate based. So it's a really good pre-workout food because you're just getting like instant energy from the food you're eating. So I've been pairing a delicious sparkle water with some kind of like gel or fruit snack or waffle or bar like from Honey Stinger that I have uh, in my stash. Um, yeah, so simple, easy, hydration plus quick energy and get to work. Nice. Trey, what about you? What are you eating? Um, so for me, uh, now we're, I, I love, like Karis, I love waffles. We have these uh, blueberry waffles. Uh, what I do is I'll put some uh, some almond or peanut butter on top of them or anything like a peanut butter jelly sandwich, something that's light, uh, but again, something that gives us energy to get through our workout. Um, but I'm a huge peanut butter fan, so anything that has peanut butter on it, I'm, I'm, I'm all game for it. We have so much in common, Trey. TV and Jay all the way. <laughs> All, all the way. <laughs> well, and speaking of Honey Stinger products, Kara, uh, someone is asking, what is your favorite product? Ooh. Ooh, I love the lemon waffle. So in the afternoon, I'll have a cup of tea after, like after practice and then put a waffle on top of it, like a total stroop waffle situation. Um, so the lemon Honey Stinger waffle is my favorite at this point. But nice. The energy chews, which I ran out of first, are my absolute favorite snack of all time. Any of them. <laughs> Any flavor. Like, it's like eating gummies. <laughs> Fruit snack connoisseur right here. Yes. <laughs> I buy them um, and, then, oh, yeah. <laughs> and then Trey, staying along the same lines of food, um, when you're thinking about getting ready for a big competition or a big tournament, What's your go-to? What do you eat? What are you drinking? What keeps you going? Okay, so like uh, for me, I'm just now like developing another aspect of my my game and starting to focus on the nutritional aspect of it. And one of the things that we were talking about is building up on our carbs before we get to that. So whether that's uh, we're eating pastas or we're eating potatoes and things of that nature to to kind of build up those uh, those energy storing blocks so that way that we're prepared for going into games. Um, eating a lot more vegetables, but again, depending depending on 
uh, your training schedule, it changes what you're eating at that time. So working with a nutritionist, we're seeing like maybe a light day might have more vegetables compared to a day where you're expecting to train harder, which you're going to have more carbs into those um, into those meals as well. Nice, making me hungry, both of you. Thank you very much. <laughs> <Same>. <laughs> So uh, someone is asking, and I would kind of be curious, I'm gonna extend on their question here a little bit. Um, they're asking, what's the difference between playing or participating in your prospective sports at the USA level versus levels before that? Um, and I think when you talk to the USA level, what might be interesting to hear is how it differs during quarantine time um, in terms of, you know, you're still required to get certain workouts in and what that looks like versus just kind of, you know, a normal grind period. For me, um, it's honestly like as an individual sport athlete, so I'm a Team USA athlete. I've been a part of Team USA TF for a very long time. And, um, that doesn't really change my day to day. Like I'm also really grateful to be uh, an Olympic and Paralympic training center athlete. I've actually trained between Chula Vista and Colorado Springs at those facilities for 10 years. Like it blows my mind, but I'm not coached by anyone that is within like USATF as a whole. So it's such a big team track and field in general, that there's really no way for USATF to monitor and require like specific workouts um, of their athletes. It's, it's very individual on a day-to-day -day basis and a coach to athlete basis and like who you decide to work with and who your medical practitioners are and all that stuff. So it's kind of a, seems like a mess, but it's a, it's a beautiful uh, messy system that develops a lot of talent in individual ways that people need individual attention and development. Um, so there's such diversity within like track and field itself that the freedom to be able to train the way that works best for you is really great. As far as quarantine, that means that I'm used to being by myself when I'm training. I don't have a training partner, so I'm usually at practice alone and I typically have headphones in at least twice a week when I'm like lifting or having technical days uh, without my coach there. So she's usually with me only one or two days a week anyway. So it's not so different. Like the only time I even travel with a team is when I'm going to Pan Am Games or um, any other Team USA event like Worlds or the Olympics um, now in 2021. So it's it's honestly it's a very different world than like a team sport would be because I typically travel to Europe alone all summer um, to compete as well. So it's definitely trying to make a new situation work, but I'm used to uh, being by myself. So. Mm. And shout out to Dana. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think I think that uh, off care like we're we're kind of the same uh, in the same boat, but whereas uh, we've had, we have 17 guys on our team uh, currently, uh, and eventually we have to cut that down to 12, but all 17 of us are scattered all across the United States and across the world. Some of our guys are playing professionally. And with that, we understand that, again, like I said, we have that common goal of wanting to win gold. So we, we have to keep ourselves accountable for our actions and our training programs for what we're doing. So I have to make sure that you know outside of the quarantine situation like i'm going to the gym and not only getting shots but i'm lifting and i'm, and I'm doing cardio uh and making sure that i'm keeping up with our training the, the awesome thing is is that um sorry kara but um that we we have a like a, a trainer right and she kind of has this like team overall goal aspect of what she sees and what she wants is in, in the improvement but if you're like hey you know like for me i'm like hey i want to focus more on my core and my back so that way i still have control when I'm in my chair, better control when I'm in my chair. And she adds those workouts in there as well. So even though it's like, this is the team workout, she also adds those individual things that we can focus on as well. And I think the awesome thing that she's also done is understanding that we're in quarantine. Uh, she took the list of the things that the equipment that we did do have 
uh, sent us out a couple of bands as well and then altered the workout. So that way that we're still focusing on building on the things that we were doing before. So that way that when 2021 comes around, we are still able to peak at that right time and not just see it as a, a two, three month off process. Nice. Sounds like your trainer has got your back and that's yeah, awesome. she's working hard. Yeah. <laughs> So um, before we push on, my last question to you, um, I think the news of Tokyo being postponed has, um, you know, kind of been uh, on the front of a lot of athletes' minds. And I know both of you were gearing up and getting ready for Tokyo. So I'm curious, um, sort of looking at the next year, uh, what's, what are you hoping for? What's the plan going forward? Um, I, I think that the same the course, I mean, the, the only thing that's really different um, going forward is the time frame, right? Uh, so we have another year to prepare, another year to build off of what we've built uh, to this point. And I think that uh, while mentally it can be uh, straining, but it also allows us to focus on that training as well, right? So again, we're, we're having to see the silver lining in the in the bad in all of this, right? We're still able to train, we're still able to focus, we're still able to fine tune those things that we have. We just have more time to do it, I think. Uh, nothing changes, the goal doesn't change. At the end of the day, we wanna bring home gold as, as a team, as USA representatives, um, but it just gives us more time to fine tune the things that we're doing. Yeah, I we had a really late world championship for track and field in 2019. So honestly, 2020 felt really condensed, like really rushed to get to the Olympic Games. And um, I was personally just kind of struggling to like find my groove in the early part of 2020. And I don't necessarily feel grateful um, for everything that's happened, but it's absolutely just a chance to to have more time to prepare. And I don't know if, um, Trey, this happens to you, but a lot of people think like, oh, you've been training for four years for this Olympic Games. And like, not really, like we have a regular season every single year. So um, sometimes in an Olympic year, like it's not weird that I was feeling this way this Olympic year, because it just, it's, you don't have four years, you have been training for four years, but you really have one to prepare for like that big show. So the opportunity to actually prepare for two is kind of amazing. Like it's, unprecedented and exciting and for me personally to clarify i do have trainers um my strength coach jamie myers uh he's been my strength coach for 10 11 years but he kind of stepped into a new role a couple seasons ago to write all of my programming so i get to have input too and then my technical coach um dana lyon has only been my coach for two and a half years and we've done awesome things like better than i'd ever done internationally in those two short seasons so the fact that season three all of a sudden was an Olympic year felt like a lot of pressure as well. So I'm even more excited to keep fine tuning the technical changes that we've made and maybe be even better in 2021. I love it. I'm all about a good silver lining. So thank you. And thank you everyone for all the questions. They were as usual, great questions. I'm really glad we got to ask them. Uh, we know everyone is having a unique experience while in quarantine. And we hope through this conversation, you've been inspired to refine and reestablish your version of maintaining a healthy balance at home. So I think before we kind of dive into the ending here, our athletes have a few challenges they would like to leave you with following our conversation. Okay. So this kind of came from, uh, I like I said, spent a lot of time alone anyway. and. One of the times that I've kind of felt most alone was last summer. I spend some time training in Prague. So I was like alone in this dormitory that's like really cheap, but has uh, no air conditioning and no Wi-Fi um, in July in the Czech Republic. And just the service is also terrible, like cell phone wise. So you get 10 megabytes of high speed uh, service like every day, but that is over at by like 9 a.m. You know, like you're on your phone for 10 minutes and you're like, oh dang it, I've used up all my service. So I was just like doing too much screen time. Like it was my only connection to the world at that point. And like, by the time I got back home, I was like, I'm sick of my phone. I need to do something about like leaving it elsewhere. So I not only turned off all of my notifications, but I started leaving it. Like if I was in a hotel, I would 
charge it in the bathroom overnight or like downstairs in my kitchen when I get home. And for me, it's just super nice to know that it's going to be there in the morning or like midday when I finally get to it. And what ends up happening is I spend more quality time with my dog in the morning. I eat breakfast like right when I get up rather than like looking at my phone for 20 minutes before I get out of bed and going downstairs. Um, and I just I feel like my day starts in such a more productive manner. So I challenge you to try that as well. Leave the phone outside the bedroom um, and see how it changes your life in one week. Challenge accepted. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Tara. All right, Trey, we would love to hear from you as well. Yeah, not a problem. Uh, so for me, it's just focusing on the positives uh, throughout this uh, dark time for all of us. Um, I know that, again, like I said before, I was sick for a little while, so I was isolated from the family uh, for two weeks and, and having that isolation kind of, you, you, like Kara said, I'm, I'm on my phone and everything on my phone is negative, right? You, you see a bunch of uh, negativity just coming through the phone. And you just wanted to, you know, focus on the positive. This is one of the things that, uh, that you know, I'm getting from a sports psychologist and uh, who I meet with, you know, twice twice a month. And and what we're implementing at home as well here uh, is just saying what you're grateful for. Uh, and it, what it does is it helps drain out all of that negativity and, and not just being like, hey, you know, I'm grateful for today. Right. It's being more specific, being like, why are you grateful for today? So that way, that way, when when you go and you set forth what you're grateful for, it doesn't become uh, something that you say over and over again. Like, I'm grateful for today and then tomorrow. I'm grateful for today. Well, let's explain why we're grateful for these days. And I think that that helps because with all, like I said, even when I'm training, right, when you get tired or if you're in a game and what you're down and you're focusing on those negative things, start focusing on the positive things so that way that you can limit the, the wave that you're riding of emotions, right? Um, and that's one thing that we're working on uh, currently. But I think that being able to stay in the moment and focusing on the positive things that you have uh, will drown out all that negativity around you. Awesome, thank you, Trey. Amazing, I, I think... think Oh, go, go ahead, Audrey. Sorry. I was going to say, I think for those, of you, <laughs> for those of you wanting to attempt both of these challenges, um, I think they go really well hand in hand. So that time away from the phone, um, find quality time with those that you love and doing the things that you enjoy. And, you know, let those things be what build your list of gratitude. You'll be able to pay a little more attention to them um, and be able to highlight them a little more specifically. Yeah, thank you both so much for sharing some of your insights and your tips and tricks as to how you've maintained that positivity and that balance and really tried to find that silver lining. It's really empowering to hear some of your stories. Um, so as Audrey was mentioning and as Trey and Kara were mentioning, it's important to remember to take time for yourself to step and step away from electronics, to be present in the time you spend with your family and your friends and to really be aware of your overall schedule and plan accordingly to prioritize the things that make you really happy. And we've, we've seen that Trey and Kara have really done strongly in that area. So if you're looking for more resources on how you can get involved, information about wellness, how to bring true sport to your program and locating your local DSUSA chapter, there's a couple of links we've included here um, that you're more than welcome to explore. Again, we really hope you enjoyed this week's panel and hope that you're able to stay connected with DSUSA and True Sport through our various other resources. Um, we really encourage you to continue to engage with our Adapt at Home Challenge, engage on social media, uh, post, tag Disabled Sports USA, True Sport USA, and engage with our athletes, Trey and Kara, as well. Again, if we were not able to get to any of your questions in the question and answer, answer, answer sorry, segment of this panel, we'll follow up with an email, don't worry. Um, we had some really great questions today. So thank you all. Um, 
a reminder, we'll work to continue to develop content to support our athlete community at this time. If you have any recommendations for us, we would love to hear from you. We, we love to hear what the current needs are and what your interests are. Um, thank you again to Audrey for, for collaborating on this wonderful series and to Trey and Kara for joining us today. Um, thank you. Again, this, yeah, this, this webinar will be available via recording in the next couple of days. Awesome. Thank you, everybody. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Bye.